so tonight we're making um, three different puddings. And um, puddings to, in our culture are sweet, usually. And they're like chocolate pudding, right? Vanilla, butterscotch pudding. And w I've got one of those. They're, they're also custards. Custards are also puddings as well. I've got a cornstarch pudding tonight, one of our typical cornstarch-based puddings, and that's an orange pudding. Um, and we also have a rice pudding, also a sweet dessert um, for after meals, or I actually use my rice pudding for breakfast because it's a wonderful breakfast item. Then the third item is a Yorkshire pudding, and Yorkshire pudding is, um, is originally um, f the basic principle of Yorkshire pudding comes out of England, and it's a it's called it's a batter pudding basically, and you can it can go either savory or sweet. Most of the time in England, it's a savory. And I lived in England, and I made Yorkshire pudding um, with, and it would be on giant roasts or giant legs of some animal, with uh, you know, and then around it would be potatoes and carrots, and it's a roast. So you, so you make that Yorkshire pudding in with your roasts. Tonight we're not going to do that. Tonight we're going to make it in a pan. You can also make it in a pan, or you can make it in muffin cups, or you can make it in popover pans, because it's basically a popover. Yorkshire pudding equals American popover. Um, so it's egg raised. It doesn't have any uh, cornstarch. It doesn't have any baking powder. It's got the eggs are what gives it the lift, um, and the fat it gives it you know pulls out more uh, gives it air and puffiness and volume. So that's what we've got going, and I'll be doing that one first. So here we go. Ready? Yeah. Okay. Um, this is Yorkshire pudding. I have. It's just come uh, to 450. The oven is on 450, and um, I'm not. I didn't have a big roast of anybody to make tonight, so I went down to the to the meat department and got some strips of fat, beef fat, that were scraps from from the meat department. I put that in the oven and I rendered it so that I'd get some nice some nice beef fat from this. So you. If you, um, you can't just use broth because it doesn't have fat, you have to have fat. So you can, ha you can the recipe calls for uh, beef fat, but you can also have, uh, you can also use butter. Um, and then if, you, if you're not using beef fat and you use butter, you can still make it wonderfully. It becomes a Dutch baby at that point, and that's also American. And you can make that savory or sweet, and that's vegetarian, FYI. Um, Okay, so these used to be bigger, and they've rendered down. We're making um, Yorkshire pudding, okay? Um, and so now there's these nice fat cracklings that just are just beef fat that's been rendered. And um, so into my pan, you can see it's, it's been sitting for a while, so now it's nice and gelled up. And uh, I've also added, because I'm not making a beast, a roast beast of anything, I've added beef broth, so there's actually a little more flavor, just a little bit. You know, so um, the recipe calls for an eighth of a cup of, of fat, and I've put about an eighth of a cup of beef broth in there as well. So there's more flavor, not just fat. You know, not that. Okay, so there's more stuff going on. And I'm going to go ahead and put this in the oven, 450. So you guys know whenever you're making, um, when you're making cornbread and you put the skillet in that has, it's got your fat in the skillet and it heats up. And so when you pour your batter in, it gets all that nice crunchy stuff at the bottom. This is how we make our cornbread with ca in cast iron skillet. So this is kind of the same idea with this fat. I'm going to put it in the oven. It's going to get nice and smoky and hot. And then I'm while that's getting hot, I'm going to be making the batter. So, we'll put her in. If you see smoke billowing, billowing up behind me, this is the way it's supposed to be. But tell me. Okay. So, um, so now what I'm going to do is I have a cup of flour, one cup flour. 
put that in my bowl. And then a little salt, just a pinch, just to make it a little more savory. Okay. And um, I just whisk my salt in with my flour. I don't sift it, really, because this, this flour is nice and pre-sifted, so I don't really sift my flour. All right, and then here I've got a cup of milk, and I've got three eggs that have already been cracked and are in this measuring cup. Now, every time I crack an egg into this measuring cup, see if you guys do this. I do this all the time. I do them one egg at a time, and I put it in a bowl or a ramekin before I put it in to the other eggs because you just never know what you're going to get when you open one of these eggs up. Um, so I'm doing that. So every single one of these eggs have been cracked first into this little dish and then it's put into here. Also my eggs are at room temperature so it's, does, it's not so much of a struggle to get it up to heat. Okay. So now I'm going to just bust these up a bit. So all these were beautiful eggs. I didn't have to do anything to them. I didn't have to toss any. You know you get eggshell in sometimes. It's like if you if you put three eggs in and you break another egg on top of that and you get eggshell in it, it's like, oh no. If you just put it in a ramekin, it won't matter because you can just toss that one and start again. And come on in. Okay. All right. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the milk into this. Again, you see, you can kind of take your time with this because it doesn't have any double-acting baking powder in it. So, you know, it, it can hang for a bit. Um, it's not going to go, it's not going to start rising like anything with double-acting baking powder does. I'm going to add the milk. Soak up milk. I'm mix that up. Any smoke behind me yet? It's going to Beat that just a little bit, not too much. It's bubbling. It's a little smoky. So. Okay. Nice and hot. I'm going to set 450. So. I'm going to pour this into here. So the egg mixture goes into, the, the egg and milk goes into the super simple, right? This is so simple. This is going into the, uh, the flour and, and um, salt. And you just beat the heck out of it for a couple minutes. Get most of the lumps out. You don't want to beat this too, I mean, you don't want to let this hang out too long, the hot fat. You want to get it back in the oven as soon as you can. But again, since this isn't double acting baking powder, it's all right. It's not going to start working on you. Unlike cornbread, you can see cornbread start to start to bubble up almost as soon as you. Okay. So then you just pour the uh, pour your batter on top of the fat. You see that? Everybody hear me fine? Did I miss anything? Should I turn the mic on? Do I need to turn the mic on? Okay. And I'm not stirring it or anything, right? I'm not doing anything. It's just like the cornbread. I'll put it back in the oven. And set my alarm for my trusty cell phone alarm for 17 minutes. I'm going to start it. All right, so um, this is what it looks like when it comes out, okay? So it's really nice and eggy. It's very puffy and fluffy, and you guys will all get a taste of it in just a little bit. It's hanging out in the microwave. Don't let me forget where it is. Okay. <laughs>